Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alcana, and welcome to Pre-Market Info. Well, we got a lot of action here today in the PC makers, but first let's start with the overall market here, Joel. We're trading flat right now, 1583. It's been a very quiet after hours session. Uh, we've actually been as low as 1580.75, as high as 1585.75, so five point range here overnight. Uh, yeah, the uh, 1585.75 uh, that took out uh, yesterday's high by a buck and a quarter. So let's just call that whole 1485 level uh, be resistance here early in the session. That 1480.75 low, soft number to me. I'm not seeing much support until we get to 1576. So if you're looking to buy a pullback, I don't think you need to hop in in, in the 1580s. Uh, bring up a chart of Hewlett Packard here because uh, IDC reporting PC shipments down 14% in Q1. Bring up the pre-market chart there, Joel, to show what's actually happened here. Joel's going to grab it here. He's doing some awesome fun stuff here, getting it all ready there for you. But here it comes. Boom! Stock down $1.30. I'm going to give some props to the Benzinga news desk here. They broke that very quickly yesterday, actually. And it was slow to respond to the stock. I actually did short this thing, believe it or not, in the after hours on the Benzinga news. So thank you, Benzinga. Of course, I cover too soon. I took 30 cents off of it. Should have held because now the thing's down a dollar, a dollar twenty here, twenty one eleven. This is just a crazy beating here for Hewlett Packard. Well, keep in mind this stock has had a huge run. Uh, let's just first take a look at the pre-market activity here. Uh, we just recently made a low right around the $21 level, made a low at $21.10, trying to get a bounce off that. Uh, let's look at the dailies here. Uh, 21 looks like a nice level here. Uh, but we had a low back at uh, on March 12th at 2094, uh, the next day 2108. So Opening into some mild support here in Hewlett Packard. If we take that out, uh, 21 uh, mild support here at the 2050 level. But you know these stocks can take uh, three or four weeks to go up, and then uh, how wrong. many days does it take to go down? Two or Dennis? three sometimes, Joel. Up like an escalator, down like an elevator, and that's what is happening with Hewlett Packard here this morning. I'm scared. I don't want to be long this stock. I've never wanted to be long this stock just because <laughs> PC, just like IDC, this is not just a, a fluky quarter. People just aren't buying PCs as much as they used to. Everybody's got their mobile devices. We've talked about this on the show for the past year. That box makers, despite Despite the huge rally in Hewlett Packard, if you go farther out on the chart, the stock used to be a $50 stock. So you can say, oh wow, it went from 12 to 23 or 24 bucks. This thing was up at $55 two years ago. So uh, yeah, it's had a great run, but when you take that chart into perspective, there's an overall trend here that is not your friend, and that trend is that people are not buying as many PCs as they used to. Microsoft 2 taking it here, Joel. You might as well bring up the chart. It's a double whammy for them. They were getting beat up on the lighter PC sales, uh, but also Goldman Sachs downgrading them to sell today. Wow, yeah, downgraded them with a targeted 27. Uh, trade got up yesterday. Uh, you had mentioned to me the way we just flew through the 29 handle oh. after spending... Days, weeks, and months, uh, 26, 27, struggled in the 28s. Uh, so here, here's a big move for the stock. I'm not sure if the boys at Goldman are caught short over there trying to bring it in or whatnot. Uh, huge move for you, uh, or for Microsoft in the pre-market. Uh, we did get down to 29.13, or excuse me, 29.03. We're getting a little bounce on that. Boy, oh boy, Dennis, this is this is a tough call. Stock being down a whole stick, that that's just a huge move for Microsoft. It's an absolute huge move. But like you said, if you go out to the last few days, we only spent two days in the 29 handle. We say, we always tell you this in the pre-market show, when you go through a handle very quickly one way, you can go through the same handle very quickly the other way because there's not a lot of reference points, not a lot of traders with positions because it only traded for a day or two in there from the, that pricing point. So I would not be surprised if this cut all the way through the 29 handle today although this is an over this is basically a huge move to the downside i don't know if i'd want to short it down here but um it's just looking at it i still don't know if i'd be a buyer until you started nibbling into the 28s again 
Uh, we got to give some props to BGC Partners, too, because they came out yesterday during the day, downgraded this thing. The stock was trading at the highs of 30.30. They downgraded it, citing that PC sales were likely to be down. And then, after hours, IDC releases that report, the PC sales shipments are down 14%. So BGC Partners, with the fa fabulous call there, giving you a shot to sell the top if you listen to them. And uh, you'd already be up a buck ten on your trade if you did listen to them. Yeah, just keep in mind uh, when uh, Microsoft came out uh, with bad news, I believe it was a couple weeks ago, the big uh, find by the Euro community, um, it did open up, it did dip and go lower, but actually the lows that it made uh, during that section uh, ended up being the low for basically uh, the not the entire move, but uh, was the impetus for this big rally over 30. Um, I don't know. Do do we sense a bet here? Uh, we're at twenty nine twenty. I I think we get back up to thirty twenty before we go down to twenty eight twenty. Uh, it's hard That's to say. One. I think you got great support. Let me just. I'm gonna pass on this bet, but I will support okay. your twenty eight twenty area. There is great support down here. Twenty eight forty, twenty eight fifty. I think you're gonna find buyers all over the place. I think it could nibble down to the twenty eight handle in the twenty eight eighty, twenty eight ninety area. I think it'll struggle to get that low of the twenty eight thirty, twenty eight forty, because you have a lot of people that were caught short this trying to bring this in. You have other people yeah. that are looking at, at this as a possible buy now because it broke out. Oh, I'm gonna get a second chance to buy it. I think you'll find buyers in the 28 handle. So uh, I'm not that bearish of stock because it just cut through the whole 29 handle altogether. So I don't want to be a, really a buyer in the 29 handle, but I do like the 28 handle. Okay, well, all right, I'll let you pass on that one then. <laughs> Intel, too, getting beat up on that same IDC report. You can see after hours, as soon as the report broke around, I think it was around 5 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, uh, so the stock actually just started selling off. Slow and steady decline, kept declining. It's now trading 21.80, down 46 cents here, or 2%, from its 4 o'clock close of 22.26. Yeah, 26, uh, 2162 is the low that we've hit in the pre-market, getting a little uh, bounce up to the 2180 level, uh, the affected uh, by the IDC report as well. Major three-day run here from uh, under 21. May had a rally from 2070, 2076 up all the way to uh, 2242. Now we're pulling back. This is a little bit more of a slippery slope here. Because I don't, you know, this whole area here cut through it pretty easily. Uh, I guess you'd have to give by the major support at uh, 2106. But what's interesting about the uh, Intel here is that uh, you had Tuesday's close 2175, Wednesday's low at 2171. Did cut through it a little bit in the pre market, but holding it right now. So 2170, key level in Intel. Yum which obviously uh, Yum Brands. The comp store sales in March were down 13% in their China unit. That was announced last night. Stock, you can see the huge decline on that news when that broke. Um, here, uh, looking at this chart here, 65 bucks. He had a low if I go back to three or four days ago in the 65.28 area, but we are trading below that right now. So Joel's going to probably point out all those lows that we had in the mid 64s there, uh, around 64.30, 64.40. Yeah, I also did have a low at 64.95 on March 4th. Nice round number. Uh, 65 area just hanging out around there uh, once again the open is going to be key in the issue like this you did cut down uh, well under 65 here to 64 uh, looks like 6440 uh, I don't know I think this one's a little bit overdone uh, if it does hold 65 look for support at that 6440 level McDonald's had a little bit of a sympathy sell-off last night. If you go to the after-hours chart on McDonald's, you'll see when the Yum story broke, McDonald's sold off about 30 to 40 cents. Let's bring up the after-hours. Yeah, there we go. You can see about 30, 40 cents it sold off. I want you guys to keep in mind a lot of you know, people do pair these up a little bit. Uh, McDonald's is strong. Last time, and I remember this last time, Yum had a steep sell-off. I think it was two months ago off the China sales. McDonald's actually opened not far that far down and actually rallied on it. So I'm just trying to remember not saying it's going to do that again, but once, once a stock does something once, sometimes it can do it again. So just keep in mind, just because Yum's down two, three bucks here today, doesn't mean McDonald's is going to fall down two or three bucks either. I wouldn't be surprised if McDonald's kind of shrugs us off. 
10106 is uh, the immediate spike down in the pre-market uh, after hours, and then we came down to 10110. But uh, I like to chart on the daily here. This 101 area that was yesterday's low, uh, it coincides with some of the pre-market activity. So if you can hold this uh, 101 area, I'd look for a bounce up. Uh, if you get back up 10150, uh, actually you've had four of the last five highs between 10447 and 10174. So obviously some institutions are uh, earmarking that 10 10150 to 75 level as major resistance. Uh, if in fact we can't uh, hold 101. Uh, minor support at 10067, and then uh, boy oh boy, you could uh, you could easily fall down to 99. But uh, this is news that's specific to Yum, not Mickey D's. Triple B Y. We'll see if Joel get it right. He always likes to put the double B Y, but he's getting it right here today, folks. Triple B Y. Box 68 versus a box 68, so the earnings are in line. Q1 guidance a little light, 88 to 94 cents. Estimates were up at 95. You can see there was a big spike down there, actually, originally, when the <laughs> stock. But then they look in and Q1 comps. They're saying they're going to be up 2 to 4%. Saying full-year comps going to be up 5 to 7%. So looking like uh, the guidance a little weak for Q1, but overall it's not that weak. And the stock's actually rallying on it now. We're up $1.31 here at 66.81 from the 65.50 close. You know why they do so well? Why is that? Because like once you go into one of their stores, like you can't get out. You have to like walk. You have <laughs> you to walk all the way around. Yeah, well, you just circle. walk in and you have to walk through the whole store and you eventually have to buy something. I mean, those are designed you know? that way. I actually took a I, mar I remember taking a marketing course back in university. And we were talking about that, basically how to make the person travel the maximum distance through your store. <laughs> uh, best but Bed Bath Beyond's done it right. You're right. You go in there and then it's like a big circle thing, and really you got to do the whole circle to get out of there. So <laughs> props to them. They're doing something right here because the stock's off obviously been one of the better performers here and uh it's doing okay here after hours as well <laughs> yeah 67.55 uh, is a level that we've had taken a little breather here um holding out at the 66.80 level obviously we take out that 66.80 there's not a lot of support under that uh taking a look at the dailies uh busted through the previous high of the move 60 uh I would say that was 65.62. So if you shorten this thing, you're a gap player off the open. It comes back down to the 65.62 level. That would fulfill the gap. Uh, weekly, uh, really not a lot in here um, in this area. Had a real bad uh, week back in um, September of 2012. So uh, whole numbers might be a good idea on this one, too, if you're looking to exit the stock. Pier 1 Imports also report, which is symbol PIR stock. Uh, it came in line, 60 cents versus 60 cents. Obviously not good enough here because they're beating it up here in the pre-market. Stock trading down at 22.50 after closing at 23.34. Uh, when you go to the dailies, there was all kinds of resistance in the 23 handle, though. You'll see all these tops here. Like, look what it was going into. Basically straight up three days right and all that resistance. Giving you a nice reference point if you did try a short and you got it. Good for you because you're getting rewarded here this morning. Right. Wow. This stop. People must be buying a lot of wicker chairs or something. Or, <laughs> geez, this has been a huge move. But uh, we'd like to talk about this stock. Isn't this the one that uh, during the financial crisis got down yeah. like thirty-seven cents or <laughs> yeah. something? Man, we I always talk about it. this when it comes up to its <laughs> earnings. I'm trying to get the low ten cents. This stock yep, got down cents. to ten cents on March thirty-first, two thousand nine. What an investment! If you were banking that this thing was not going bankrupt, I'm going to put my money. And a lot of them did go bankrupt. But if you pick this one, PIR ten cents is where it traded at in two thousand nine. It is now twenty-three dollars. I can't even figure out the percentage return. Maybe one of our our live listeners can figure out the percentage return on probably, that. Probably Kevin can. Kevin's quick at uh, figuring that stuff out. Maybe he'll throw out the what the uh, the real percentage return. It's probably like. 10,000%, something crazy anyways. 20,000%. Jobless claims down now, uh, 42,346K. So that's given a little little pump in the market here. We still haven't taken out that overnight high at 85.75. Up a buck and a half here. So not a huge market mover. Support, let's find support in our Pier 1 imports for our wicker chair traders, uh, 22.55. 
Uh, that was the low on Tuesday. 22.78 was the low yesterday. Critical for this stock to hold this 22.55 area. If not, Dennis, I wouldn't want to be long in your account. Yeah, because you got all those. You got a lot of support down there at 2140, but there's a lot of air between 2250 and yeah, 2140. Yeah, that, that's a slippery slope. Especially, and it's easy to figure out the 50% retracement from a dime, right? It got up to 23, so you can you can easily figure that one out. Uh, let's talk about some of the upgrades and downgrades because there's some uh, big ones here today. Adobe, Goldman Sachs active today. Adobe getting upgraded at Goldman Sachs here this morning. Uh, not a lot of trades here though for Adobe yet. Actually zero, but it is bid up at 44.92. Nobody's sniffing him, so it looks like it's going to open higher than that. It closed at 44.70, so it looks like Adobe's going to open higher. The high yesterday and the high of the move overall, 45.40. Obviously, I'd keep that level in mind. If it takes that out, it'll opens up. Yeah, they must be getting paid by uh, the updates or something like that. Uh, 45.40 is the high from yesterday. Uh, taking a look uh, longer term. Can't even find any resistance uh, in the weekly. See if we could find some in the monthly. I don't know. I'm going to have to. Is this an all-time high for that stock? Uh, I can try to go out and look uh, myself too. No, back. I can find it back in 0708. Go back to 0708. Yeah, we got up to the 48 yeah. area. Yep, high at uh, 45.28 back in uh, March of, or excuse me, September of 2008. Uh, so that could be a, a target for some of you traders out there. Then the high in August of 2008 was 46.44. So a couple levels to keep an eye on. FDO getting downgraded at Goldman Sachs. I told you they were active. What a day for FDO yesterday. Bring up the chart from yesterday. You can see the crazy trading action. Obviously reported those earnings. Um, and the stock was trading down in the pre-market pretty significantly. You can see trading all the way down about 56, 57 bucks in the pre-market. Rallied all the way back. Ended up closing strong, closing near the highs of the day at 60. Uh, what was close? 60.44. Now Goldman Sachs says, "Well, we rallied up here, but we still don't like it. And we're downgrading it today. Stock not trading any volume here either on this downgrade, but it is offered at 59.94. So it's offered down 50 cents, and nobody's sniffing him either. So it looks like it's going to open below 60." Yeah, here's uh, one of those scenarios where it gets way overdone in the pre-market. You got down to 56.76 in the pre-market, uh, made a nice double bottom, but uh, once the uh, regular session came into play, uh, the stock did open up at uh, uh, 59. Wow, it opened quite a bit higher than where it's trading in the pre-market. Yeah. Uh, it just kept rallying. I was watching it actually because we had talked about it on the show, and then it slow that slow steady climb opened down just a bit, but just rallied up. So um, yeah, so it just continued higher. So the pre market early on didn't uh, hold there, and they just turned around and started liking it. So it's funny. He's got to figure reports. there's air coming back down now. Um, you know if this uh, if this downgrade had holds any water. Yeah, for sure. ZUM Zebra Joel, uh, that's getting an upgrade at Piper Jaffrey here today. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the stock is gonna break out here. Looks like to new highs again. Uh, twenty-seven, twenty-five. Look at this move. Twenty-seven, twenty-five here this morning. It's up two dollars and thirty-five cents. Up nine point four, almost ten percent here in the pre-market. Uh, no real volume, only 695 shares, but man, this thing is trading high. It's bid up there too, 27.15 bid. 27.30 uh, is what we've hit in the in the pre-market trading. Almost no volume to speak of here. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of these teen retailers, so <laughs> not, not gonna let not not gonna let you know what my opinion is on this thing off the open. But uh, boy, oh boy, what a move! I know. Volume. If you go out to 2012, though, Joel, you'll find a couple tops there in the 27 handle. I think it was October there. Uh, if you back her up there, there you go. Uh, Joel will go hunt those down for you. He likes to do that, so I'll let him do it. <laughs> All right, 27.40 was a high back in October of 2012. So if you've been holding this stock since then, here's your opportunity to get out to 27.40 level. Uh, the previous the month before that, you had a high at 27.69. So... 2750 is going to be, to me, it's going to be major resistance in Z-U-M-Z. Okay, quick talk about Apple, and then we're going to have to end the show because we are running out of time. Apple had a pretty good day yesterday, 
bounced back quietly, um, obviously with the overall market, but um, it was up 10 bucks here yesterday, Joel. Uh, do you see that move? We keep talking about this whole 419 level. That put a double bottom in there three, four days ago, right around the same area. So technically speaking, the bulls, like we said, are still in command as long as things stay above 419. It did that four days ago. And uh, so the bulls can, you can make an argument that that double bottom is in. Are you going to make that argument too? Yeah, I mean that. I mean it's just been getting real tight under there, and then you know it, uh, Apple kind of got sucked along with the market yesterday. People were buying, they're buying everything, so why not buy some Apple? Uh, you do have some identifiable resistance though. 437.06 was yesterday's high. Uh, you go back to uh, April 3rd, you had a 437.28 high, uh, just right above that 438.14. So that all. The whole 437 handle, if you're playing this long off the open, we get back up there. You have to respect that as resistance. Uh, coming back on the downside, I mean, we just have that pump up straight from 426. I'm not expecting uh, you know, a lot of uh, support until you come back. Uh, you know, 430, nice wrong number. Uh, we did dip pre-market low. We'll keep an eye on that, 431.70. That's our show for today, guys. Have a great trading session. We will be back with you tomorrow.